Good morning, everyone. Get my uh, morning coffee. I'm going to have my exam in January. So right now I have about two weeks. On today's video, I'm going to tell you guys a bit about how I study, exact methods I use. Anyway, I'll just have my coffee first. And let it come. important tips for you is for the LPC I realized that most of the examination I have experienced so far they focus a lot on the SGS activities so in your revision you definitely shouldn't focus on reading the whole chapters or the whole lecture notes because there are a lot of things there that are not gonna be examined it depends on your motivation if you're genuinely wanting to know more about a particular topic and subject feel free go for it read as many as you want however if we are here talking just about examination purposes you just need to study those materials that are highly examinable especially when it comes to LPC they focus a lot on the SGS activities those kind of questions are usually the kind of question that will appear in the actual examination so you definitely should spend more time on consolidating those SGS solutions of course they're not going to be exactly the same however you still will acquire that familiarity of the concept and the style that will help you a lot when it comes to tackling the actual examination questions gonna finish my coffee first. In the past video, I talked about how to study for law school. I also tell you that, uh, okay, you need to aim as high as possible. You don't only want to get a good grade, you want to get the highest grade possible. That's the mindset you should have. Usually in the morning after a coffee, I will just have my breakfast. Mixture of protein shake, and I also add some like oats. It really tastes like ice cream with a vanilla flavor because my protein shake is vanilla flavor. It's so tasty, I really love my breakfast. After I finish this very quickly, I'm just going to go straight to my studying session. And I usually divide into like three uh, periods each day. In the morning, I'll do one SGS and consolidation, three, four hours. In the afternoon, three, four hours consolidation on another topic. And at night, uh, consolidation on another topic. After today, I'm gonna finish all of my consolidation exercise and not taking exercise. That means starting from tomorrow, I will probably, you know, uh, start doing some practice paper, examination papers. I always advise people to uh, put your notes into practice because you finish your notes, right? They are like very well structured, well organized. You need to use the notes to actually attempt some past papers so that it helps you understand how you can use it more efficiently, what are the key points you want to flag. That's why I leave actually two weeks before the examination because those two weeks are very important. I, I do not only need to attempt some past paper questions, try my notes and maybe while doing the past uh, paper questions, I realize something new or I realize some uh, Areas that I'm more weak at. As we go, we go, we go, go reach the paradise. We all we know for you, yet I will sacrifice. Let it come, ooh, let it come, ooh, yeah. Also, some of you guys may wonder, uh, why do I listen to music? Some people like listening to music while studying, right? For me, first of all, it helps me with my concentration. Particularly, I choose one song that I listen to millions of times. That's why while studying, I listen to that song, I wouldn't pay attention to its lyrics anymore so that I just treat it as a background music. And additionally, scientists find that uh, listening to music also triggers the release of dopamine, which actually puts you in a happier mood. When people are in a happier mood, they will be able to solve tasks more efficiently and more easily. Get on my ride, get on my ride, sit back, hold on tight. Feeling my vibe, feeling my vibe, I see you in my side. If you the sun, then I hope to be the planet surrounding you. Taking selfies with the satellites while I'm with you. <sighs> Just came back from grocery shopping, you know, tier 4 lockdown London, so gotta buy some stuff. London is always like, it rains for no reason. I also uh, take a walk after, you know, like studying for a bit. Taking a walk kind of help your brain to recharge a little bit. It's always important to take breaks uh, from time to time while studying. If you study with uh, BPP or any other kinds of uh, course providers, they will give you some materials, maybe compulsory reading, some extra materials. Also, you may get some uh, mini book, 
which can help you to study the legislations, etc. They will be useful, especially at the first time when you study that subject or at the beginning, because you will have a, a, an official material to refer to. Uh, however, later down the line, when you uh, start really seriously revising the content, it's always good for you to incorporate all those uh, materials uh, into your notes so that your notes also contain some most important or useful legislations, statutory references, so that in the actual examinations you don't actually need to refer to so many different you know materials or books. Otherwise, it will be uh, first of all a waste of your time, and second of all you will be so disorganized. I also want to mention about some note-taking uh, strategies. What I personally find helpful is that. Whenever you take notes or try to you know, summarize a particular area of law, try to use a very methodological approach if possible. What does that mean? I will just give you one example here. I am working on this topic on equity finance about insider dealing. So uh, you can see uh, when I take my notes, I literally outlined uh, the step-by-step -step approach, like uh, step one, whether uh, someone is an individual in the first place because it only imposes offense on individuals. And step two, I would say whether there's an offense committed. And step three, whether he's an insider under the statute. Step four is the information inside information. Uh, and at to the end, step six, the next step, whether there are some defenses as well. Uh, and at the end, penalties. So you can see I literally like laid out the seven steps to solve a problem concerning insider dealing. That means uh, when it comes to this kind of question in examination, I literally just need to apply uh, the steps I outline and then to apply the facts to the law. The methodological approach will help you massively in dealing with an examination question because it will give you a very logical and structural approach and also you outline the answer step by step the examiners will feel like oh it's so easy to mark your answer because they're all in a very orderly fashion and it's just easy to read so that they're also likely to give you a better mark and all the tips i want to give you guys is about consolidation as well actually many people ignore the fact that consolidation is probably the most important thing for your class or your degree. Uh, because imagine whenever before you start your class, you will be asked to read a lot of materials, right? A lot of information on a particular legal subject. However, it is until the actual class that you will know which particular areas of that subject are actually important or will be dealt with in the actual examination. So that's why it's very important after every single class, ideally on that particular day as well, sit down, review all the materials, and then try to make your consolidated notes. Uh, why shouldn't you wait for a week? Usually it's way more efficient when you do it on the same day you attended that class because after you attend a class, your knowledge is still very fresh in your mind. It's just you need some time to reset when you do it in the weekends because you need to familiarize yourself with the materials again and that wastes you probably, I don't know, an hour or 30 minutes to do that. And if you do it right away after the class, it saves you some time in the long run. For those of you who are doing your law degree, I definitely recommend this approach because it saves you a lot of time and it helps you consolidate all the knowledge. Also, I am a big fan of making subtopics for each lectures or lessons. Why do I have to do that? Because imagine first week of your lecture, you have these massive notes on different legal topics. Whenever you revise it, you just feel like it's so daunting because there's so many pages for you to read. However, if you divide into like say five to 10 sub legal topics, then whenever you revise it, you feel like, okay, I just finished uh, the first two topics and then I have maybe seven to eight small topics left. You feel more satisfied because you can track your progress of which particular subject you've finished. And then you just feel motivated to move on to the next subject. Also, it helps you to clarify what topics are covered in that particular lecture. Later on, when you look back at those lectures, you will just have in mind all the important topics. In exams, it's about issue spotting. And you already kind of spot the issues and divide them into different sections in your notes. Then in a real exam scenario, you will more likely be able to articulate those issues or spot those issues. So this is also a tip that I personally use and I find it very helpful. How much time should you spend on each particular question? I would say, generally speaking, if you already know how many percent or how many marks will be allocated to a particular question, then that would be great. For example, if 
there are 20% MCQ and 80% long form questions and you have like two hours to complete it then you can do some mental calculation beforehand so you have 120 minutes so that for every uh, 10 marks you need to spend around 12 minutes in other words for the MCQ which is 20% you need to spend about 24 minutes on that and for the remaining long form questions you will spend the remaining times on that when it comes to the real examination you spend maybe like uh, already 24 minutes on the MCQ but you may, you may have like two questions left the best strategy for you is, is to just randomly put a, a, you know, an answer for those questions first and then move on to the long form questions because the time you spent on those MCQs question you're gonna sacrifice the time you spend on the long form question which potentially give you even more marks than the MCQ question so the most smart move is for you to actually focus on that question within the set time limit this is very important because many people they spend a lot of time mentioning a lot of things on a question that is worth maybe I don't know five marks you need to understand the purpose of examination examination is not gonna test your extensive knowledge in one particular subject because that's not the purpose of examination the purpose of examination is to let you showcase your understanding of a wide variety of subjects in a short period of time so there's no point for you to explain a subject like you explain it in your dissertation or a research paper you just need to know the basic and hit the key points so that you get the marks and move on to the another question this is today's video hopefully the tips I shared with you will be helpful for your upcoming examinations and connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram I'll see you guys next time Let it come